Everybody and their sister and their brother knows that the Walt Disney Company separated from Gina Carano. But what is that separation? Well, that's a really important question because Miss Carano is claiming that she is owed some penalties, some fines, some compensation for her time at the Walt Disney Company, and more importantly, for the time that she lost out, a promise not kept. The mainstream media, of course, dismissing that, but today we're going to face them with reality. Sit tight, folks. You do not want to miss this one. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. They don't say that at the Haunted Mansion in Tokyo anymore. Gendered <laughs> language, they call it. But we're happy to do so here, and we're happy, happy, happy that Michelle, a force of light, following the uh, win with uh, the Swifties last night. Swifties for the win. Michelle is rejoining us after about two weeks of hiatus. Hello there, Michelle. How are you? I'm good. It's, it's good to be here. Yeah, it was, it was a fun game last night. And we also have LW Ghost, sir. It is a pleasure as always. Always a pleasure. Now, Michelle, before we get into the topic at hand, I don't know if you saw, but Taylor Swift's boyfriend going a little cray-cray uh, when it came to uh, his legendary coach. Does that give you any pause, any worry about Taylor Swift and this relationship? Might be, uh, might be a bad situation. I will say she's going to need to keep an eye on it, but uh, I will also say as someone who played sports uh, into college that uh, sports can bring out a competitive side in some of us that, uh, yeah, I, I can understand also the, the level of frustration. <laughs> if, it, if it doesn't bring out a competitive side, you're not good at it. I mean, that's what yes. it's about. Yeah, yeah. And so, folks, so, everybody that Michelle <laughs> got a flagrant over or a technical, every time she was ejected, <laughs> the person survived it's okay those were temporary issues i might have told the refs a few times they were terrible but they moved on <laughs> and they needed it let's call it a let's call it an intervention uh disney's going to need an intervention because take a look at this very quickly very briefly folks out of that parkplace.com deadpool co-creator and I, I apologize i don't know how to pronounce this gentleman's name but i think that it's fabian nichitsa Questions Gina Carano's lawsuit that admits he has no clue what he's talking about. Now, folks, you need to be bookmarked to that parkplace.com simply because of all the great news that comes out of it. But I have to admit that when I saw this headline, what amazed me was that I said, wait a minute, that's, it's not just the Deadpool co-creator, it's it's everybody in journalism. They're, so far, the vast majority have underestimated the importance of this lawsuit. Let's, let's give this guy credit. He is the first person we've seen in any amount of time anywhere associated with Disney who admits he doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't happen in the Igerverse very often. So You know what? I will I will grant that. So uh, to uh, Mr. Nichitsa, we are impressed, sir. We are impressed that you uh, were able to make that 180 so quickly. But yeah, the, very dismissive has been the situation. And so I want to go and take a look at how this is playing out. Let's go now, folks. This is Daily Beast, and uh, Nicholas Shepard is the author here. Oh, this is Here's a what it says. <laughs> yes, we're, we're going to put this through the lens of expertise in just a moment and see how Mr. Shepard does. We'll read it, folks. Several years after being fined from the Disney-produced Star Wars show, The Mandalorian, over a series of controversial tweets, and remember, tweets are determined to be controversial based subjectively on the people who deem them to be controversial. Actress Gina Carano is attempting to sue Disney. No, she is suing Disney. With financial backing from Elon Musk for wrongful termination. Rather than position Carano as an avatar for seething political and ideological outrage, <laughs> or see her decision as a spear thrust into the bloated underbelly of a corrupt progressive monolith, I'm instead going to try and break the situation down in a measured and balanced way. And so sure far, is. so far, that sounds good to me. Let's see how the performance is. It's the execution that matters, right, Lou? Yeah. The actress claims the entertainment giant discriminated against her for voicing right-wing opinions on hot-button issues. Well, right off the bat, that's false. Yes. Gina Carano does not claim that she posted right-wing opinions on hot-button issues. She claims that she posted sort of universal thoughts and ideas that, while they may be deemed by some to be controversial, they're, well... She doesn't think they are, and apparently and many people agree. By Can the way, I also let, just say about 10, probably 15 years ago, what she voiced would have been considered uh, liberal? You yes. can say that, and I would and, tend to and, agree. And we, can we say that the whole thing apparently really began, if you read the text of the very long but interesting lawsuit, with them being very upset that she refused to name her pronouns? Mm. Yeah. 
Boy, those are important. A, that's a sin against humanity. Isn't it? <laughs> well, um, they just they just made sure that they fixed that with the High Republic, uh, ladies and gentlemen. If you, if you don't know what we're talking about, go back in the video catalog here on the Pro Channel, and the High Republic, the defunct and failed uh, Star Wars young adult novel series. Well, they've they've got that all figured out now when it comes to pronouns. Oh, good. <laughs> Free speech is as American as a bald eagle in its stars and stripes sweater swooping down from Mount Rushmore to peck at an apple pie. I don't but think America is you, also you, the land of free get, enterprise. You won't get a copyright suit if I hum the Star Spangled Banner under it, will you? <laughs> I don't, I, I, I don't know who holds that, but I, th I assume it's... I think uh, it's public it's, domain. Yes. I think it's so, It's older too. than Mickey Mouse, let's put it that way. A sphere <laughs> in which competitive businesses develop their own culture, expectations, internal policies. Disney, once the very embodiment of American capitalism and schmaltzy, Sentimental mainstream entertainment is beset with hypocrisy, cynicism, and prissy ideology. So far, okay. Yeah. But it is nonetheless a private business and has the right to be hypocritical, sanctimonious, and cynical, and make decisions as it sees fit to uphold whatever threadbare value system it has and to look after its interests. Now, here is, I think, uh, the rub. Before we get into whether or not Gina Carano even said anything worth uh, you know, removing her, the question is... Was Gina Carano removed? Was she fired? Was she terminated? Was she severed? Like, this language really matters in terms of the lawsuit. And so mm -hmm. let's go to the lawsuit, and then let's get your thoughts on this. Here's the lawsuit uh, looking at us right now. Here we go, folks. And it says, point 168, defendant's actions damaged Carano. Defendant is Disney here. Not only in the loss of her role in The Mandalorian, but also in the loss of the role promised her and already approved by Disney and Rangers of the New Republic. And Michelle, you remember the, the Rangers of the New Republic being announced by Kathleen Kennedy prior to all of this going down. You remember that? Yes. Yeah, uh, they, have a, they have a logo and everything ready for Rangers of the New Republic. Mm-hmm. Uh, point 171, defendant's harassment and termination of plaintiff and refusal to hire her for other promised roles were intended to cause injury to Carano, amounted to despicable conduct undertaken with willful and conscious disregard of plaintiff's rights under California law, and amounted to despicable conduct that subjected Carano to cruel and unjust hardship and conscious disregard for her rights, thus supporting punitive damages. Lou, I want to go to you first because you understand how the industry works at a level most people do not. When a role is promised to someone, that doesn't sound to me like she was technically hired. It doesn't sound to me like she had signed a contract and they had signed and everybody was signed and everybody's happy. It sounds like we were prior to that stage, but in your estimation, does that matter? <laughs> no, it doesn't matter because uh, we hear that the first time she heard about this was Favreau approaching her and saying, your life is about to change because we're going to do all this stuff. And by the way, when we talk about life changing, on uh, Mando, she was getting 25 grand an episode. In the mm -hmm. new show, she would have gotten between 125 and 250,000 an episode. So that'll change your life in a big way, aside from the fame and fortune. But the point is, he couldn't have even said that to her had they not already contacted her agent, her representative, because that's why the industry has agents and mandates them, is so that you get the business side happening before all this uh, public emotional frou frou. And the fact that her agent terminated her at the same moment that they put out this really nasty tweet announcing to the world she doesn't work for us and she'll never work for us again and she's an evil bad doo-doo head besides. Uh, <laughs> that at the same moment her agent said, uh, and she doesn't work uh, with us anymore either. God, there's a, I cannot believe for a minute. Just not, I can't believe for a minute. We're all talking about, oh, once we get into discovery, we'll find out all this. Elon's lawyers have to know all of this already. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't have even gotten into this without having all of this in black and white. And the main threat, of course, of, of uh, discovery in this case is confirming it. It's not, oh gosh, did that happen? It's, it did happen, didn't it? If they say no, they're lying and we can prove it. If they say yes, they've made the case. So I have no inside information, but I cannot believe for a minute that she was ever even told, let alone promised, without there being something going on. And when we talk about, oh, well, but a contract wasn't signed, as far as I hear, the contract wasn't signed for The Rock to do this new uh, Moana cartoon, right? right. Uh, the contract wasn't signed to do this epic deal that they just announced worth a billion and a half. 
Uh, lots of contracts don't finally get signed until well after the announcement, but that doesn't make them pretty damn binding because I'll tell you what, if those things didn't happen, if, for example, this epic thing didn't happen, uh, there would be some serious SEC problems for Iger for having announced it as part of that earnings call. So, Lou, those are those are fantastic points. I am so glad you brought all of that up. That is connecting those dots is, is wonderful. Thank you so much. It may that. be a wish that a heart makes, but in Hollywood, it's a deal. <laughs> Let's put it <laughs> well. That way. So now that so now that we agree that there's something to this, like there's an actual cause for Gina Carano to uh, to, to to come after Disney well, and Elon Musk to fund it. Can I, I just wonder, add to that really quick, pro? Um, yes. Are we to are we to believe? Uh, I mean, maybe we can because Kathleen Kennedy is clearly a horrible uh, president of Lucasfilm and very dysfunctional. She runs a very dysfunctional ship at Lucasfilm. But are we to believe that she would come on stage with a logo? Uh, and we we have that artwork. I have that artwork of Rangers of the New Republic without asking, without knowing that the lead star Gina Carano had said yes to this gig. Right, I, I'm, I'm totally yeah. with you. Yeah. Now, I want to, Michelle, this is, I'm, I'm going to tee you up for a specific reason here on this, okay? Because this is getting back in the Daily Beast and going past all that. So we've, we've bypassed now uh, the claims that, well, she was just, you know, she's just not brought back. She's just not continued in the role, but they're able to separate, no problem. Let's get into now, I think, what is a bit incendiary. And this is, this is again, from the Daily Beast uh, author, says, now this is what I term the gloss over moment. The moment when a typical right-wing oh. streamer on you or YouTuber in their tacky, neon-lit filming grotto will shrug a shoulder and say, I don't think what she posted was all that bad before moving swiftly on to extol Gina Carano as a libertarian Xena warrior princess about to smite Hollywood. Well, wait, wait, wait. hold on, pro. Let me check her. No, I can't find any neon anywhere in this grotto. I don't know where it went. But. Well, that's, so, 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 Michelle, I'm going to give you full screen for a moment, okay? Michelle, you are on YouTube. You have a YouTube channel. I, I don't have see neon, man. you do have a little bit of neon back there. I don't. I don't. I wouldn't call the space you're in a grotto necessarily. Um, <laughs> but I just want to clarify for this uh, illustrious and verbose writer for Daily Beast. We don't normally do this, Michelle. What level of postgraduate uh, uh, education do you have? I have a PhD. Okay, good. Now let's continue on. I, I just I just want to establish that you are not uh, a schmutz giving your thoughts online. You are a very accredited, highly qualified, intel intelligent, credentialed individual. Let I only have degrees from the School of Hard Knocks. I got bored <laughs> with college and left early to go make movies. So, so uh, Michelle... Here's what here's what the claim is: a proper look, a proper look at the issue necessitates a proper look at the evidence. Lucasfilm in 2021 announced that Carano would not be returning to the hit series after showing, sharing a post in which she said, "Most people today don't realize that to get to the point where the bad people from Germany in World War II could easily round up thousands of Jews, the government first made their neighbors hate them simply for being Jews. How is that any different from hating someone for their political views?" All right, now, it goes on to talk about how awful, how terrible that was, and it goes on to talk about vaccination issues, which, by the way, not clear-cut any longer, I would say. Um, Michelle, do you think that anything that Gina Carano said gives Disney cause to say, due to the morality clause within your contract or due to ethical standards, we cannot be associated with you? Uh, no, because it's a general statement meant for all people that basically, I mean, if you summarize what she said, don't allow of outward forces, the government media to make you hate someone simply because they have different political views. Different political views could be you're on the left or you're on the right or you're in the middle or libertarian or green party or any of these things. Uh, so I don't see, I, I've never understood what the issue was here. And if the issue is you don't like that there was a comparison to World War uh, II people, uh, then, then I guess you have a really good case as to why Pedro should have been fired a long time ago as well. And Mark Hamill. Yes. 
which later in the suit, if anybody wants to go actually look up this text that we're going to, they show pictures of the stuff that both Pedro and Mark Hamill put up, basically calling Trump the N-word that ends in Z-I, uh, and calling all of his followers that and showing pictures of uh, Nuremberg rallies and salutes and all of the rest. But those, as telling as they are, as far as the other part of the suit, which is the sexual uh, bias part of it, that, hey, the men could do it, but I couldn't, our dear departed friend Carl Weathers posted basically the exact same thing yes. she did, and they didn't say word one. So it well, isn't just a matter of, of somebody posting something different and not getting spanked. Somebody posting the same thing didn't get spanked, but he was a man. Well, and let's go to a little, let's, let me give you a little more context, too, to around the time that Gina is writing this. It is around the time that people were losing their jobs uh, for deciding not to take a certain um, shot that yeah. you could receive. Yeah. And people like Don Lemon, or however he wants to say his name. Don Lemon. Literally, you can find the clip of him laughing at basically just laughs when a guy says he hopes the people that haven't received that shot die. Yeah. What, what was that, the, what did they call that winter? Behind this. What did they call the winter just a few years ago where they said it was going to be the winter of something winter or another? Of death. The winter of death. <laughs> that didn't happen, did it? No. And, and by the way, all, again, folks, we're not a medical channel. Please don't take any medical advice from us. But I will say that whatever the cause is, and we've talked about this before on the channel briefly, uh, we are, in, in the whole world, as far as we can tell, is running something like 20% more deaths than normal in the year 2023, and we assume going into 2024. So I don't know what's causing that, and, and but even, clearly we've got a problem. Even if not, and again, I'm no medical expert, there was some controversy about the Super Bowl yesterday about the Pfizer ad where they compared their founders to people like Louis Pasteur and, and <laughs> great innovators, and meanwhile... The Pfizer people testified before Congress that they never tested this thing as far as it w whether it would keep it from spreading to other people. So well, that Pfizer, argument, Pfizer has some that whole real argument skeletons. that if you don't get it, you're harming everybody else in the, around you. It isn't just about you. Was total BS. So I, I would just uh, I would recommend people go look on your own uh, into the history of Pfizer decades and decades ago. I would just recommend that. Although. We love all companies. We wish them all the best. We hope they make oodles we and oodles of money. We just tell the way. truth, which, of course, Disney and their clones in this are not. Exactly. Uh, taking us back to what we're talking about here, which is these pe they're pe everybody on that side, and there are more of them, but this guy with the beast is just hilariously awful. Uh, well, it's, it's, not, it's not about free speech and First Amendment when it's a private company. You want to bet? Yes. It sure as hell is, and especially so in California, because you see... Although this is a federal case, and in order for it to be a federal case, A, the parties have to live in different states, and she lives in uh, Montana. And so it's a, it's a, it's a cross-jurisdictional issue is why the feds get involved. And second, it has to be for 75 grand or more, which this easily is. The reason why <laughs> this is about California law, and California, unlike pretty much every other state in the union, decades ago wrote labor laws that said you cannot be penalized, harassed at work, or otherwise abused over your political beliefs and expressing them. Now, you know, I, as I've said to some people, this goes all the way back to the blacklist, you know, in the 50s and McCarthyism, where we heard that Hollywood was against all that for freedom of speech, and now it comes out they don't mind blacklists as long as they're the ones running them. Lou, how, how prevalent do you think it is in today's Hollywood, the, the idea that someone such as Disney could call an agent and say, Hey, and we're not alleging that's happened. We'll wait till discovery. But how prevalent do you think it might be that that's happening? Well, let's just put it this way. If you are Agent X and you are Studio Y, not Disney, not these people, let's just take it out of the totally in the realm of the hypothetical. Anybody out there listening to this, if you're an agent and you have not one client, several clients, famous, not yet famous, want to be famous, and your entire income is based on those people working, and you get a call from one of the major employers in that business that says, we wouldn't want anything bad to happen to your people, but, you know, if you don't get rid of this one, we ain't going to hire any of the other ones. How quick would you turn on a dime? That's a good point. That's a good point. And, and by the way, doing that, saying, well, she doesn't work for us anymore, and therefore 
uh, I can't comment on whether I represented her in that deal or not, is a way for those people to avoid being called on the carpet for it, at least until we get into the, the discovery and the trial. So <laughs> they use influence all the time. And let's, when we talked about, by the way, we keep mentioning the morals clause in somebody's contract. Uh, that's about personal behavior, not about words. That's a good that point. Is about, that is about, that goes back to the old days when the studios had guys whose only job was to cover up the fact that this one was sleeping with that one or this one was caught in a whorehouse in this place. Or they, and they did that on a routine basis because, of course, the PR department kept American movie fans and around the world blissfully ignorant of the peccadilloes of their favorite people. And then social media happened. Well, um, Michelle, I want to give you the last word on this. And we've brought this topic up before, but I have not yet heard your thoughts on it. And I would be intrigued to know. Lucasfilm, clearly, they think the kind of strong woman they want is Leslie Headland, the former personal assistant <laughs> to Mr. Weinstein. And clearly the kind of strong woman they don't want is a Gina Carano, someone who, whether you like her tweets or not, it seems to me that she was clearly trying to articulate a vision for a better future. That's that's the impetus for the tweets. So, Michelle, what do you make of a of a studio that can't seem to find success lately, and their choice is Leslie over Gina? Do you think that the audience out there? Do you think that that folks out there listening? even if they're hiding out in their right-wing grottos or what have you, do you think that they've realized that if they were in Lucasfilm that they're more like Gina Carano than like Leslie Headland and therefore they would be treated this way? Yes. Um, I, I think that's why the Gina Carano, fi let's just call it what it was, a firing. They fired her. They had, a, they, they had at least a verbal contract and logo art to go with it for another show that she was going to be in as along with Mando uh, continuing in that. Um, but they got rid of her, but everyone, the reason that stung so much, even to me, the reason it stung for so many people and you see Disney has greatly struggled uh, since that moment. Uh, you basically told half the country that your let me use their words, that your views. And then I put this word in quotes are abhorrent. Yeah. And yeah. that's something that has stuck with me all this time. And it clearly, look at the box office, look at the way people are, are treating Disney. It clearly has stuck with a lot of people. And, and by the way, can we say something else about that Rangers show? Absolutely. If it, was, if it was a great concept and they thought it was sellable, would it depend on her being in it? Because obviously they, did, they didn't just cancel her, they canceled the yes. whole thing. So, you know, that shows you how integral she was to it, that they didn't have any faith in it to spend any more money on it or do anything else about it unless she was involved. And as far as Leslie Headland, we have now discovered through this lawsuit that she was involved in a GoFundMe fund to harass Gina, funded by employees on the clock within Disney. So as I have said from the beginning, this is not about Gina Carano. It is telling everybody else who works for Disney and everybody else who works in Hollywood, we can do this to you, too, if you don't toe the line. Now, and that is that is intimidating. As we've learned from the D files happened with people as far as being sent to HR, if they're in animation. Yes. And, uh, this is this is blackmail. This is this is uh, extortion. If, and if uh, it is proven to be true. Yes. 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 Now, I, I, I just want to end with this last paragraph and sentence because Nicholas Shepard, the author at Daily Beast, we don't like the language about YouTubers. We don't like some of this. We don't like that there seems to be a lack of understanding when it comes to just what Gina was subjected to, i.e. there's no mention in this article about the struggle session with Kathleen Kennedy. There's no mention of the GoFundMe that was funded apparently, allegedly, by someone working at Lucasfilm in which Gina Carano was requested to have to put money into it for her to be attacked. And then she discovers, oh, wait, Lucasfilm's behind this. All, none of that is mentioned, and it should be. But I do it's want to give Nicholas Shepard... It's not that they fired her publicly without telling her, and she wound up with people camped out on her lawn for a right. week. She was hiding in terror behind her closed blinds in her house. Yep. This is, this is physical danger that they put her to. Yeah. But, but in the end, Nicholas Shepard arrives at saying, in the end, employees in the private sector tend to face an uphill climb in garnering damages for terminations over problematic online posts. 
deemed offensive and to contravene workplace policies. Unlike employees in the, in the public sector, such workers are not shielded from discipline under the First Amendment. That's America. No. And to that I say, to that I say, so be it. If she loses, if she loses, Disney will also lose so long as this goes to discovery. I think she's got a good chance of winning. I think the assessment and the uh, analyzing on Daily Beast is incorrect. But even if we grant that, that, that everything is right over there, if Gina gets to uh, discovery, the process is the punishment to quote Culture Casino. And that, uh, that I think, is what everyone needs to walk away from understanding with this Gina Carano lawsuit. Michelle, you have fantastic content over on uh, Force of Light. Tell the folks what's coming up next. Yes, well, yeah, go check my sister and I out at Force of Light Entertainment on YouTube. We just posted our trailer rea or yeah trailer reactions to both Deadpool and Wicked. So uh, go check those out. Ooh, I Ooh. bet it's going to be popular. Uh, <laughs> Lou, you have uh, member exclusive content on this channel. Yes, releasing later today. You, Tommy Tables, and Lauren Connor. Tell the folks out there what they can expect if they're a member. Well, you can expect us to go real deep into some movies that you may know or may not know. And in the case of the one we're going to do this coming weekend, because we tape these usually on Saturday night, it's a take on a movie that never occurred to Tommy and I, but that Lauren came up with, that I think, Michelle, you will find fascinating. If you've ever seen the Tom Hanks remake of the old classic English movie, The Lady Killers. I have it. Well, go look at it and then know that Lorne says Tom Hanks in the movie is really Satan tempting all these other people into doing bad things. Uh -oh. And it never, it never occurred to me until Lorne brought it up, and you'll hear more about that and a lot more when we do it. But meanwhile, this time it was Broadsword Calling Danny Boy, Steven Spielberg's favorite war movie. Love it. And folks, make sure you check that out. Also, you can help us out a little bit by clicking that like button, share, subscribe, and click it. Stick it to the algorithms, the notification bell. Also, do not let this be just three people talking online, but no, join in with this neon lit grotto. Uh, <laughs> join in in our uh, coven of chaos and drop a comment down below. Folks, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and keep having fun. Listen up, my brothers and sisters. You've been listening to Phil's and Zoe's with an agenda to destroy your brain cells for far too long. It's time to change your way of doing things. Hold up. TPP is the place to be. Covering the news so honestly. It's a team that's cool and tried and true. Ahead of the culture curve they're trying to keep you. Jonas and Pro, they run the show. And they dragged in the bearded culture casino. You got Dolly and Lord and Fourth of Life. Wonderful people, yeah, they all right. They got weird bringing in people like Flora, but made no mistake with Lorena Creole. Amelia and John stuttering guitarist. Martin and Tani and someone called CMS. Fat Steven makes a bunch of other graphics. Did I mention a partnership with Bending in the comics? That guy is a guy and Doc Matt does the web stuff. There's probably some people I miss. I hope they're not uh, telling you the news. That should be fun. With accurate info that's not been spun, you can figure it out as you will see. The T PP is the place to be. Yeah, oh, Wilton. Yeah, that was actually pretty good, or white. But I, I think you might have forgotten Vash. Well, he lost all his friends. But it was implied. <laughs> uh.